Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. We'll go through the dollar, the yields, precious metals, and then all the commodities that I follow. If you guys need any help, anything commodity related, definitely sign up to finding-value.com, the platinum membership. Use the word discount in the coupon code if you want a discount uh, and you need help with commodities. So let's dive in, I'll give you my financial opinions here. Uh, this is the U.S. dollar. Uh, the dollar showing up today to the upside, 1.15%. Uh, I know that there's been gyrations in the overall bond markets over in Japan and also in um, England. And that could be leading to some, we'll call it, upward pressure on the dollar. Now, the dollar broke this falling wedge. That generally is an indication to move higher. We saw a little bit of falling off here. I was like, well, maybe we will head lower, but nope. The buyers are coming in. They are showing us that they are there uh, and we're heading higher in the dollar. And I do think that we will head higher from here uh, momentum wise. Uh, and I don't think it will. Um, I don't think we're going to head lower, not with today, especially coming out of a falling wedge. So we kind of drifted sideways and then we're eventually heading higher. The 10 year yield heading lower today. We had a little bit of a consolidation here. I would have assumed that was going to break to the upside, but we. We chopped lower today. It bounced to the downside for today. TLT bond price is higher, so yields lower, price, bond price is higher. They move inversely to one another. Uh, this is the 20 year Treasury bond ETF up a little bit today. Momentum's heading down. That's why it's a red candlestick day, but still ended the day up 1.91%. Uh, TYX lower yields down 2%, uh, a little bit lower there. And then we've got the TYX, T1, uh, TNX ratio just slightly higher. Uh, generally speaking, this ratio is really low, uh, favorable for precious metals. And when we look at this, generally speaking, not all the times, but it's good to be looking at precious metals. Bought, you know, June 2018, down in uh, 06, all the way till 2011, 2012. Uh, that's kind of where it turns, and you want to move. Uh, from asset to asset. It doesn't mean that'll work every time, but just generally speaking, uh, precious metals are probably a good spot to be looking at at this time frame. The CRB index, I know we had a pretty big sell-off in uh, oil today and natural gas for that matter. Uh, looking at the dailies, we've had this, this consolidation here. We've got a little bit of selling pressure here. Could this be that return move uh, that we're getting? It very well could be. Uh, and it could be it could pull back even further than than where we are today. We've got a lot of momentum coming back, and that's in the CRB index. It's a heavy weighted oil. So we'll look at those. Uh, CRB to S&P 500, basically flat today. Uh, we've got gold higher. Uh, we've got stronger dollar, weaker yields. Uh, gold's higher today, but you know we do have this wedge that's forming. Generally, these wedges, ascending wedges, end to the downside, and we've got a candlestick at the top. Can the gold market overpower this and break higher, or are we going to get a little bit of a, of a pullback before it breaks higher? Um, either way, I'm bullish. I just don't know the short-term path here. Generally, in the short, short term, with an ascending wedge, it wants to break to the downside, not the upside. Uh, but that doesn't exclude it breaking to the upside. I mean, we're right there grinding on the upper channel, trying to break out. And if we get a good strong closing tomorrow, it's probably just going to run higher. But you know, just keep in mind, ascending wedges generally fall to the downside, and this may not, or it may be a false breakout to the upside. Silver, again, we're, we're getting up to this resistance level. We're getting resistance. You can see the wick up there where it traded. It traded up and came back down throughout the day. So are we going to break higher here, or are we going to go and head lower? We're at that decision point right now. Platinum, uh, actually, platinum did very well today, up $18, 1.7% clear outperformer versus the other uh, metals. Uh, it actually finished quite strong. This looks like a pretty good break for, for platinum. Uh, hopefully, the momentum can continue and we, can, we head higher. Uh, again, things don't go straight higher. They cycle up and down. I call it a stair-step pattern. So uh, that's kind of how, how the markets uh, cycle, stair-step pattern. But we're in a, we could be in a uh, impulse move higher. 
XAU to gold ratio up 1.83%. A lot of the gold and silver mining companies did very well today. We are still at this pesky long-term resistance line that we're trying to break through. And uh, we're right underneath it, right underneath that resistance line. GDX up 3.5%, right at resistance. Um, so we've, we're trying to break through a bunch of resistance that we have overhead. Uh, and we do have a lot of resistance. SILJ uh, also at resistance, right underneath it. And again, we've got a lot of overhead resistance there uh, that we have to break through go going through history. Uh, that resistance is buyers and sellers trading at that same uh, price point right above us. Where we've got buyers and sellers. So we come through it and people are selling, saying, oh, if it ever gets back to this price, I'm going to sell it. Something on the lines of that. Crude oil down 3.84%. This does look like it wants to head lower in the short term. Uh, I don't think it's going to be forever. I think we might have one last little blip down. I think that's going to happen in the equities as well. Uh, scare everybody out of it, and then it's going to reverse and head on higher. That's my guess. Uh, again, I don't know the future, uh, but right now, in the short term, it definitely looks like it wants to head lower. Uh, natural gas, we've got warm weather over in Europe, uh, a lot warmer than normal, a lot, lot warmer. Uh, that is weighing down on natural gas prices. Now, if I look at this, this is a topping consolidation pattern, kind of that shoulder head shoulder comes down, we consolidate, and this is kind of the last. I think I think we're getting close to a bottom here at some point. Uh, but we do have a lot of negative, uh, a confluence of negative events uh, that are happening for this price to move lower. We've got Freeport still uh, down. We've got very warm weather. And the inventories are not drawing down over in Europe as fast as what a normal winter would be. We had a little bit of cold winter beginning of December. Now it's very much warmer than average. And the weather is going to push this thing around. So this is all, in my opinion, weather related. And it's also technically based here with these pullbacks. I do think that we're close to a potential bottom somewhere in here and that we're going to get some buying pressure so long that the fundamentals change with this weather. Uh, and Freeport comes back online. But that's still some ways into the future. So it could be a rough next couple of weeks. XOP, yeah, you know me, down 5.6%. Uh, and with this pattern here, I said this is a, generally speaking, a continuation pattern. Now, is this a false breakout? Are we going to go a little bit lower? We very well could come back here. Uh, and and if, if oil decides to go a little bit lower, we could pull back to this general vicinity. I don't think that we're just going to blow out below this. I think we'll, we'll hold somewhere in this general vicinity here, uh, and we'll probably put in a bottom at some point. Uh, and not to say that we haven't already put it in. Um, I don't think we have just by looking at the oil charts. I do think we'll get somewhere in that general vicinity down here. Looking at OIH, that also has a little bit of a bearish stance here. Uh, we have a bearish engulfing there. We came down. We went into a rising or ascending wedge, and generally these break to the downside. But here's the thing. This isn't a big pattern. So when we look at this pattern, the projected move, if you take it, is the entrance point, and then you basically stick it to here, but that doesn't mean it has to go down that far. We could go down to this, roughly this general area, maybe a little bit below it. Uh, we do have a wick at the bottom here a little bit, which means it bounced off its its lows. This is the, the five-day pattern. You can see that it's bouncing up a little bit towards the end of the day, um, and we'll see if we get a little bit lower or if this thing wants to come on. We just kind of did a false breakout. Either way, short-term movements are the most difficult to project. Uh, that's why I don't really play the short, short term. Uh, what I really try to do is find entry points uh, where I try my best to enter in. And what this looks like is we'll see if this momentum can carries up and we start moving higher, higher and this is a false breakout. Or uh, what I'm inclined to think is if oil comes and pulls back a little bit more, that we head back more towards this range down here and gives us an ultimate really good entry point for a lot of these. And I've been cost averaging in uh, to some of my favorite companies already. Looking at Sprott uh, Physical Uranium Trust, it's actually up 2.84%, looking quite strong. Nice strong finish as well. So the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust is looking actually very good. And this started from this big bullish engulfing right there. Boom. That was a reversal candlestick to move higher. Uh, URNM, down a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't say this was a bad day looking at the overall markets because the overall markets were down today. Uh, so URNM was down a little bit. We're up against that resistance support line. 
Uh, that's that line right there that we're, we're looking at. Uh, and I think everything looks really good for a potential move higher uh, if the markets can calm the heck down. TAN. TAN's down 1%. That's the solar ETF. This does look a little bit bearish, like we could continue to head lower uh, for TAN in the short term. Uh, this still looks all right from a longer term perspective, although we could pull back a little bit uh, in this, we'll call it uh, flag pattern. COPX, uh, that is up today, 1% up, which is actually quite strong given the overall markets were uh, down today. Uh, but just moving sideways. We're just kind of in this channel here, moving sideways. We've got lithium that's still looking a little bit weak here, down 1.14%. That is a bearish engulfing pattern where we could see further downside uh, in lithium. And looking at this from a longer term perspective, it still looks a little bit bearish where we could pull back a little bit further to the downside, possibly even all the way down at about $40 uh, ish. Uh, REMX also pulling a little bit lower today, down 1.93%. This is a bearish engulfing. It still looks like we've got potentially some further downside in the short term. Uh, the S&P 500 also getting some selling pressure. It is a bearish engulfing where we could head lower. <clears throat> we've got NASDAQ, uh, US Composite. This is a bearish piercing uh, where you open up here, you, you sell off throughout the day, and you go below the 50th percentile of the candlestick before. That's generally a reversal candlestick, and we could be reversing to the downside here. So we could see further selling pressure both in the S&P 500 uh, and the NASDAQ composite in the very short term. And remember, it could maybe only be a day or two. It doesn't. I'm not saying that it necessarily has to last a long time, uh, but we got some selling pressure today. EEM still looking good, moving sideways. Uh, stronger dollar, stronger EEM. I, I would say EEM is being quite strong today. So sideways motion there. XHB, the home builders, uh, as weird as it sounds, home builders are holding up very well uh, despite the overall markets being down, up 1.34%, just moving sideways here. So that's looking good. Uh, Moo, a little bit uh, down today. This is a bearish engulfing. We've got a couple of them here, those two. Uh, that does look like it could potentially head lower in the short term. Uh, Moo seems to move very well with the overall markets, and we could see a, a further pullback. Uh, a little bit lower in, at, in Moo. Copper, uh, we're right at resistance, down 1%, and we're just basically playing with the resistance line above and below it. Uh, lumber down 1.4%. Let's see if we're breaking out of anything here. Uh, we're still in the pattern here. Everything still looks all right in the falling wedge. We do have a little wick at the bottom. This very well could break to the upside uh, with some time. It doesn't look too bad. Looking at uh, iron ore, iron ore is uh, in this pattern here. There we go. Let's move this pattern and, and, and really squeeze it up there. There we go. So this is a falling wedge. And the falling wedge, we still have one last kind of arc to do here before I think we break. So this is um, hump one, two, and then we get a third hump generally. Uh, and then I think we're going to break to the upside. Nickel. Uh, moving on higher, we've got a little bit lower today, 0.8%. And that's what it looks like there. Uh, looks like we're trying to break to the up. Here, I can just say, do this. There's your kind of your trend line. We want to stay above that trend line. We want to break above this guy, basically right where we're at with some resistance. We've got resistance from back here going across. Aluminum down 0.6%, but we are tracking quite well, just moving sideways. Uh, we're kind of basing out here kind of putting in this double bottom or so. And I think eventually it's going to break to the upside and run. Baltic dry index, this hasn't been updated. It broke out and we're kind of just sitting there, but that's December numbers there. Newcastle coal just moving sideways today, uh, no change. And then Ethereum sideways and same with Bitcoin, just sideways. Not much of an update there. We're coming into a dead period uh, where this could break either way. So that's what I've got for today, guys. Um, overall. I'd say platinum looks the strongest. Platinum looks the strongest. We're getting a little bit of weakness in oil, especially some of these companies that are high cost producers. They are moving all over the place. Um, I think we're getting close to what I would say a, a turning point. Uh, usually at the end of these things, they kind of do one last puke and then they, they turn and go. 
Um, if you look at previous patterns and how these things consolidate, the consolidation's about done. So I think here, uh, maybe over the next week or two, we could see this thing kind of puke out, get whatever it, it is out of it, get the last retail investors to potentially <laughs> reverse to short, and then it's going to do the hopefully the slingshot squeeze on them, uh, at least in oil. So that's what we've got uh, for there. Uh, give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Subscribe to the website if you'd like. And uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.